Hey everyone, we're going to be taking a look at my personal rig once again, and today we're going to be testing out to see if Thermal Grizzly's Cryonaut actually makes a big difference in your liquid cooling performance. Now, I haven't uploaded this video yet, but I once again did a upgrade on my rig just to give you guys some insight onto what was going on with it before. Um, I don't know if how long some of you guys have been around but if you remember I put out a video a while ago where I made an upgrade on my rig where I put in a 3070 upgrading from a 3060 Ti and I also installed a 240 millimeter liquid cooler and that worked really well for me for a while then I did another upgrade on my system where I plopped in a 13700K into that existing rig and when I did thermal performance tests on it the 240 millimeter liquid cooler actually kept up really well. I shouldn't say really well, it kept up just well enough. It was sticking around 80 degrees Celsius when I had it under 100% load, which to me was okay. Um, it was passable and I was doing a benchmark test where I would run Heaven and Cinebench at the same time, just to try to get the internal temperature of my case as high as possible to really properly test like how well it was genuinely being cooled. Then I put out another video where I slotted in a 7900 XTX into my build. Now that's when things started to get really hot inside the case and I didn't initially realize it just by slotting in the 7900 XTX because the 3070 is also a pretty warm GPU for the most part. But the 7900 XTX gets really, really hot. So one day I just decided to run Cinebench I can't remember what the reason was. I think somebody left a comment on a video talking about how my cinnamon score wasn't as high as it probably should be. I was like, maybe I lost the silicon lottery or maybe there were some other factors. So I wanted to run it again. And this time I turned on core temp because I wanted to see how warm the processor was getting. And it was almost immediately thermal throttling with the 240 millimeter liquid cooler. And I was like, that is really weird because I didn't really have a whole lot else going on. But then I checked the, like, the ambient temperature inside my case and just even sitting and idling, the 7900 XTX is really warm. And rest assured, I don't have one of those models that has the overheating issues with the junction temp. I've done extremely strenuous tests and just checked the thermal temps on this 7900 XTX and it is perfectly fine. It only gets to like max 83 degrees Celsius on the junction temperature. So that definitely wasn't the issue, it's just with a 13700K and the 7900XTX, it's just a warm rig now. And I was not getting enough airflow with the fans I had in there before. Um, if once again, you remember in that video, I had Corsair LL120s, which aren't like the most efficient fans out there. And I was kind of getting them for the RGB. So what I ended up doing was I put in these Be Quiet fans with a 360 millimeter Be Quiet liquid cooler. And the temperature went down, but I used the stock thermal paste. So long story short, <laughs> the inspiration for this video was I wanted to see if I could get the temperature down even more if I use the cryonaut thermal paste rather than the stock thermal paste that came with this Be Quiet cooler. And this is one where I'm gonna do the, I'm gonna do like the dual benchmark where I'm gonna run Heaven and Cinebench at the same time just to really get those temperatures up and we'll see maybe where our thermal limit is with this build. I have two 140 millimeter. Actually, maybe I should just show you what's going on with it. So we have a one 20 millimeter exhaust fan, a 360 millimeter AIO up front. And then on top, we can get a good shot of it here. We have two 140 millimeter fans. And all these are the light wing fans, uh, high PWM. So let's just see, you know, what kind of thermal it's also supposed to get with, with that. So I got core temp going on already. Right now, it looks like we are probably living around the 30s. Start up that multi-core test and we'll turn on heaven. As you can see, we're already getting up to Mid 80s, our max here looks like 86 degrees on core five. Everything else looks pretty good. 
We'll let this run for a little bit and then we'll come back and we'll record some of the max temps and see where we're at. All right, I've been letting this run for a little while and the temp isn't gonna change a whole lot more from here. It does get a little bit warmer when I do like a full 30 minute test. But as you can see, most cores sit around like 85 degrees Celsius. Um, not too bad, honestly, it's pretty good for the kind of load I'm putting onto it right now and the hardware I'm using. But once again, I'm gonna put on some Thermal Grizzlies Cryonat and we'll see if maybe we get any kind of performance boost here. Um, as you can see, like the hottest I got on one of the cores was 87 degrees Celsius. Like I said, it doesn't get much worse than that. If I do it for the thir full 30 minutes, I typically get to like one core, maybe at 89 degrees Celsius. So it's not gonna get a whole lot hotter than this, but yeah, let's put on that cryonaut and see what our results are afterwards. All right, it's time to apply our cryonaut. Now, one thing about this Thermal Grizzly cryonaut is that it's actually supposed to be better for liquid cooling. Um, so that's why I selected this one out today. Now, I don't really have like a super particular method for applying thermal paste, but I do like to spread it out by hand to make sure I get like a good amount of, well, more like a perfect amount of thermal paste on the whole CPU. Nice thing about, see, we got a good, good application on the old stuff on there. Nice thing about the Be Quiet one is it's super easy to take off, so I appreciate that. First thing to do is clean off, obviously, the old residue with some rubbing alcohol, revealing our nice 13700K. Should be good enough. And the same thing for the Be Quiet cooler. This one seems like it got a lot more of the paste stuck onto it, so it might be a bit more of a pain to wipe off here. I could take a Q-tip and like go extra hard on this stuff, but it does not matter that much, honestly. Shouldn't really affect the thermals at all, just have a little bit of leftover paste from the old stuff. Especially because it wasn't like dry, it was pretty fresh paste when I put it on there. Now the cryonaut does come with its own like little spreader, I'm probably not going to use it today though. Because that stuff gets messy quick. I kind of start with an X pattern. And then I spread it out. Oh yeah. Like I said, it's the X pattern's fine for the most part. I just like to go the extra step and make sure it's got full coverage. I don't really do anything like super exact here either. Like if you watch Gamers Nexus, they'll sit and freaking have it like perfectly, <laughs> perfectly spread out. Like it looks like it's from the freaking factory the way they do it. All right, decently spread out, not perfect, but we can go ahead and put the cooler back on now. Like I said, the cool thing about the Be Quiet one is it is pretty easy. There we go. <clears throat> All right, very nice. Now let's test the thermals and see if we got any kind of improvement. All right, so we are going to be doing the same exact like double tests with Cinebench and Heaven Benchmark running just to get the hottest conditions possible. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and get that going. Right now we're idling at like 30 degrees Celsius, a little less than that, more like 28. And I am immediately already seeing pretty big improvements in terms of the thermals here. If you remember last time when we did this, we almost immediately jumped up into the 80s. And right now, looks like the hottest core is like about 78 degrees Celsius with most of them sitting around 75. So it's like, we at least have a five to, I remember even some of them maybe were getting 83, 85 degrees Celsius last time. So we almost have like a five to 10 degree improvement, which is super shocking. And we went ahead and let this run for 10 to 15 minutes. I think that's what I did last time. So. I'll be back in a moment. We'll see if we continue to see the same five to 10 degree improvement after some time. All right, I've let it go for about 15 minutes here. It actually might even be longer than I did before. <laughs> um, but you can see, honestly, the temperature hasn't changed a whole lot. 
Um, the hottest one of the cores got was 84 degrees Celsius. Core three isn't even sitting at that at the moment. And then we have one at 83. Um, if I remember correctly, I think some of the cores were hitting almost 89 degrees Celsius, the hottest. So we're getting at least like a five to six degree difference in temperature uh, at its hottest. And honestly, I'm just so impressed with the Cryonaut. I'm just so shocked that for the most part, we are staying under 80 degrees Celsius, even after 15 minutes of 100% load on my GPU and CPU running two benchmarks. We are pumping out a ton of heat right now in this system. Uh, but yeah, I mean, you're never really gonna be putting your computer under this kind of load, especially for this long. I mean, there's some really strenuous games, but um, this is just kind of an incredible result just by spending a little extra money for some higher end thermal paste. I mean, realistically, how much is a tuba cryo not like 10 bucks? So, I mean, at this point, I can't really recommend them enough. All right, well, that's gonna do it for today's video, guys. Uh, I know it was kind of a quick one, um, but I thought it was honestly a really fun video to do just to see, you know, what a couple extra bucks and some thermal paste can actually do for your build. I might've been over exaggerating a little bit. I looked back at some of the footage and I was saying like 10 degrees Celsius, it's more like five. Uh, but to be fair, when you're getting as hot as I am, five degrees Celsius actually is a pretty big difference. If you're running a bit of a cooler rig, you might see more improvement or less improvement. Um, just kind of depends. It also really depends on your environment too. Right now I'm recording in like a super compact room. I did leave the door open uh, to kind of get some fresh air in as it was doing the benchmark so it didn't get too hot. Uh, but if I left that door closed in the small room, regardless of thermal paste, I was hitting like 90 degrees Celsius. Uh, but that's more because of like the temperature of this room was just getting like super, super warm. So there wasn't really uh, much that could be done, if that makes sense. But yeah, all that being said, uh, it was still like worth, in my opinion, the money to get that five degree improvement. Knowing that at 100% load, I'm not like hovering in the 85 degrees Celsius and hotter range during those super heavy loads is kind of nice. Uh, just being able to keep, you know, more around like the 78, 79 degrees Celsius mark. Uh, just makes me feel more comfortable knowing that my system's gonna be nice and cool. Yeah, that's gonna be kind of it. If you enjoyed today's video and you found it informative, please give it a like. It would help me out a lot. Please consider leaving a comment if you have any questions about you know, my build or the cryonaut that I'm using, or if you have any recommendations for a video like this in the future um, for some thermal paste that you guys maybe like. Like I said, I really like Thermal Grizzly, but I know there's a lot of other good thermal pastes out there that you can use. Um, so doing a video like this with like, you know, maybe a variety of thermal paste would be kind of fun. We can do a whole benchmark test with a whole bunch of different thermal paste and see the results that we get and see if there's really any big difference depending on what kind of thermal paste you end up purchasing. If you've been watching my channel for a while and been watching some of my content, it'd also be nice if you thought about subscribing. Um, helps the channel out a lot. We're getting really close to hitting 500. We're at 390 right now. I know 110 subscribers kind of sounds like a lot, but it's been growing pretty quickly. So getting to that 500 mark would be a huge milestone for us. And that's really all I got for you guys today. Once again, thank you for watching the video and I hope to see you all in the next one.